The Magic and Mythology of the Hare Following the hare through story and folklore takes us on a merry and magical ride. Hares are animals associated with both the sun and the moon, perhaps because the time we tend to notice them and think of them is most around the spring equinox or astara, when day and night are of equal lengths. The Easter bunny bringing Easter eggs on Easter morning is likely a modern form of the ancient astara hare, with its eggs representing fertility and the greening of spring. In English we have the phrase mad as a March hare, which alludes to their springtime mating rituals and behaviours, when there is much leaping about, chasing each other and sometimes boxing with each other, which can be the guys fighting each other, or ladies fighting off unwanted attention. As a creature of fertility, as they breed like their relative the rabbit, and can even conceive while already pregnant, they are associated with the sun. In ancient Egypt it was said that the hare greeted the dawn and the returning sun each morning. Several stories from the First Peoples of the Americas describe how the hare lives in the east and the realm of the rising sun. As a mysterious and magical creature, they're also linked with the moon, according to myths from as far away as Mexico, Britain, India and China. In Britain we have the idea of the moon-gazing hare, who symbolises good fortune, fertility and blessings of all kinds, and just to see a hare gazing at the moon was said to bring good luck. Many old legends, especially from China and India, tell us that the hare is living in or on the moon, and that its shape can still be seen today, formed by the darker patches when the moon is full. In Buddhist lore, one day when the Buddha was hungry, a hare sacrificed himself for the Buddha to eat by leaping into the flames of a fire. As an act of gratitude, the Buddha imprinted the image of the hare upon the moon for all to see. In Chinese tales, the hare living on the moon is a kind of alchemical healer who uses various herbs, a pestle and mortar, to mix a special elixir of immortality. The hare, as a creature of magic who stares at the sun and moon, and who after it opens its eyes at a few days old never seems to close them again, not even to blink or sleep, is an animal of all seeing, so is often linked with the art and skill of divination. The Chinese hare in the moon, as well as being an alchemist, is a diviner, and both the Romans and the Celts used the hare for divination. According to Dio Cassius, the Celtic queen of the Iceni, Boudicca, released a hare from her robes and divined the future outcome of battle by watching how it then behaved. As it ran off at great speed towards the other side, Boudicca interpreted that as meaning victory for her people, with the hare representing the Romans then running away. Hares are associated with an awful lot of gods and goddesses. The sacred animals to Freya as the Norse goddess of sex and magic, to Chang'e as the Chinese goddess of the moon, to the Egyptian god Osiris once he becomes resurrected, and to the possible Anglo-Saxon goddess of spring and the dawn Eostra, who herself is sometimes said to have the head of a hare. As the hare symbolises not just fertility but also lust and sex, it's a sacred animal to the Greek goddess Aphrodite, the Roman Venus, and her son Eros or Cupid. In indigenous American and African American lore, the hare is a trickster character. <clears throat> the African American character, Br'er Rabbit, is a clever trickster who uses his brain rather than brawn to outwit others. While many of the indigenous tribes in America and Canada have legends of a trickster spirit who often appears in the form of a great hare who co-created the world. The great spirit then sent the great hare to earth to teach the indigenous peoples many things, and one of the first things he did was to name everything, plants, animals, rocks, you name it, and he even developed a system of writing. So yet again the hare is seen as a clever creature. In Britain and elsewhere the hare is one of the witch's familiars. Many witches were also rumoured to be able to shapeshift into the form of a hare, and there are countless stories where wounds that were inflicted on hares are found the next day on the local witch. Isabel Gowdy of Aldhern, when accused of witchcraft, claimed to be able to transform into and out of the shape of a hare by using two simple spells. The first one, to become a hare, was I shall go into a hare with sorrow and sigh and with mickle care, and I shall go in the devil's name, and I while I come home again. And two, to return to human shape, hare, hare, God send the care, I am in a hare's likeness now, but I shall be a woman's likeness even now. The hare is a healer, a magician, a knower of mysteries, who symbolises resurrection, rebirth, good fortune and abundance. In times past, parts of the hare were eaten or carried for luck. The hare's foot was once a very popular charm for travellers and for bringing good fortune. Today all we need is the image of a hare to connect to their magic and wisdom. We don't need to hurt them. Rather we need to preserve them and their habitats. If you love working with the cycles of the moon and the sun, or you're looking to connect more deeply with them, the hare makes a friendly ally and teacher. If you're looking to enhance your magical or divination skills, then hare here too can be your guide. To dream of hares indicates a time of plenty and a very busy time ahead with an increase in energy and creativity. Things are on the up. It can indicate short, sharp arguments that will quickly be resolved and then harmony will be restored. For women dreaming of hares, it can portend pregnancies or new opportunities coming your way. 
Hair encourages us to be true to ourselves, our instincts and our intuition. Hair guides us to look for creative solutions to our problems and to trust ourselves and others in the situation to be able to sort it out wisely and amicably. What will you learn from the hair? Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.